Hello everyone, this is Brian, the Rational Investor, back with a nice quick little tutorial here. We're going to try and do this under two minutes. We're going to take a quick look at the MACD indicator, using it on Coinergy, and maybe some uh, quick little pointers as to what we should be looking for here. Uh, MACD indicator, just a uh, wiki definition, you can just simply Google it, M-A-C-D. Uh, the indicator itself stands for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. And basically, as the uh, diagram here illustrates, it's simply a study of two different moving averages um, and their relationship over time uh, with price. So if we hop on over to Google, or excuse me, on over to the Coinergy site and log in, a great looking site, these guys, oh, they've done such a nice job. And here's our Bitcoin uh, versus US dollar here. Nice uh, price chart. So beautiful. Uh, for this study here, you can see it defaults with the volume on it here like this. Uh, we're gonna hide this now. Uh, we're gonna go up to the boxes up here. You can see my mouse is scrolling up here and you can see that there's this box with the little line and the dot and it says indicators, fundamental economy and add on So we're gonna click that box. And we're going to scroll down through the list of indicators, and you'll notice that they have quite a big library, and we're going to select MACD. When you do that, you'll notice that the MACD study pops on the chart. It's nice and clean. Um, and there's actually three different uh, pieces of information on this MACD indicator. Um, <clears throat> so basically, it's just that simple to load it. I mean, these uh, charts are extremely uh, friendly to use. So, you know, if we wanted to change the symbol on this, and the great part about it is the indicator stays put. Let's say, for example, we're going to look at Litecoin uh, versus the US dollar. Same thing. There's the price chart. There's the indicator. Nice and pretty. So uh, let's go back to Bitcoin and let's take a good look at this indicator and see if it has to tell us anything here. <clears throat> okay, um, and for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just grab the indicator window and you can see we can move it up so we can really get a good look. So as you can see, there's uh, three different lines here uh, or three different, I guess, plots on this MACD indicator. You'll notice that the uh, indicator values are in this little window here. You see where it says MACD. So we can see that the default settings, and you know you can go into the uh, settings box and actually change those settings to your liking. But you can see that the default, you can always hit the default button and it takes you back to that default setting. Um, it's set up at 12, 26, and nine. So what this means is, the MACD, remember it stands for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. It is going to literally look at the relationship between the 12 period exponential moving average and the 26 period exponential moving average. And that's basically what this blue line is. Um, you know, we can, for demonstration purposes, put the uh, moving averages themselves on the uh, price chart so you can actually see them. Uh, where are we here? Moving average exponential. So we just simply went into the indicators list again. We selected moving average exponential. There they are there. So just like I showed you the settings by clicking this middle button that says format, I can go into the moving averages and actually set them. Remember, here's the uh, inputs. And as we said in the study, we're going to do first one 12. And we'll do the second one, 26. Maybe let's change the second one to, I don't know, yellow so that we can at least see it. So there it is. All right, so as you can see, uh, we're working off the one hour chart here on Bitcoin. We've added a MACD indicator that's basically just set to the default settings. Um, I've gone ahead and added a couple moving averages here to, uh, to highlight uh, the actual uh, moving average relationships. So you can actually see the internal workings of these in this indicator. All right, so what does this tell us? Um, <clears throat> very simply put, the blue line, right, is the relationship between these two moving averages. 
Right. Maybe let's change this blue to something more striking. How about red? All right, there we go. All right, and very simply put, if the fast-moving average is above the slow-moving average, you're going to get a positive reading, right? See how this is a zero line here? You're going to get a positive reading on the MACD indicator. Right? That's that blue line, MACD indicator. And then as, of course, this relationship narrows and then actually goes negative, you notice, you see here, the relationship actually crosses negative, the blue line crosses below the zero level. It's just that simple. Um, it's just simply the relationship between two moving averages and plotted on a simple positive negative scale. The second line that you see here, the red line, that is, and that's what this nine is, right? That is what they call the signal line. And that is a nine period exponential moving average of this blue line, of that relationship. So it's a little tricky uh, to wrap your head around it, but the long and short of it is blue line is a relationship between two moving averages. Red line is a moving average of that relationship. And as you can see, I mean, it gyrates, you know, uh, bull, uh, bullish, obviously, when the blue line crosses the red line, right, and price went up here, and bearish when the blue line crosses back below the moving average, price moves down here. Um, you know, and this basically oscillates through the life of a securities price action. Very normal. Um, because MACD doesn't really have a maximum or minimum oscillation level, people use this indicator to highlight overbought and oversold at extremes. So hopefully you can understand this big move down. This is an extreme. Those using MACD to measure extremes, this is how they would use it. My advice would be couple this indicator with an oscillator like a relative strength index or a stochastic or a Williams percentage R to give you that sort of overbought, oversold confirmation. Um, the next thing that we need to look at is the histogram. Right. That is this uh, red sort of filled in line here. Why don't we, for demonstration purposes, let's make the histogram yellow so that way they're all different. All right. So blue line is the MACD indicator, right? The relationship between those two moving averages. Right? Red line is the moving average of that indicator. The yellow line or this histogram is basically a visual representation of this relationship between the indicator and the moving average. And in essence, um, what we're looking for with the histogram is we want to sort of see the push, right? And hopefully what you see here is through this level here, the market was coiling, right, or consolidating. Momentum was really consolidating, right? And then, you know, like the best way to use this uh, histogram, and this is what I like to use the histogram for, is you can really see there was a battle here in momentum, and then all of a sudden, boom, we lost it, right? And I'm a big fan of what we call market structure, where M's are bearish. So if we see market structure within the indicator itself, that gives us a pretty good idea that internally price isn't nearly as strong as what you know the market price would lead you to believe. And this is quite often the case. In fact, what we call this is simply a bearish MACD momentum divergence, right? Where the momentum indicator is falling off, but price is continuing to rise, 
right? And so, you know, the, the handy part of this indicator is that at this point here, even though it just looked like a down bar, right, the indicator was giving you major warning signs that, hey, there was a problem here. And sure enough, boom, <laughs> they cleaned up the problem. All right, what's really interesting here, hopefully you can see, we actually have like a little bit of a W. Boom, 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 away we go. You see that? Really cute. Um, and so this message right here, again, thinking about market structure, if Ms are bearish, guess what Ws are, right? They're bullish. So if you did see this in the MACD indicator histogram, then basically what it's telling you is, you know, not necessarily that this is a screaming buy, but maybe the monster bear impetus push is maybe running out of steam down here, right? And sure enough, you know, that was basically the case. Okay, why don't we leave the tutorial at that for today? I think we covered that fairly well. We've defined what the MACD is. We've defined what these different studies are. I'm not really a big fan of taking every single signal line trade because as you can see, you could get really chopped up in here. And with commissions, ugh, it's tough. You know, every once in a while, especially when the market goes into real oscillation, MACD will give you some great timing signals just off of the signal line itself. Me personally, I take more uh, information and more sort of trade impetus off of the relationship of the histogram more than anything else. And that's how I really like to use the uh, MACD indicator. Okay, so why don't we leave that uh, for today? I think that was a pretty good summary and uh, we'll talk soon. So everybody have yourself a great day. Any questions, feel free to pop by uh, our site, therationalinvestor.co, and uh, come on into our chat room and uh, ask away. All right, talk to you guys soon. All the best, and bye for now.